1873, a geologist made a strange discovery on California's Channel Islands. Lying in the sand was the tooth of a mammoth. Prior to this discovery, mammoths were known to have lived across the Northern Hemisphere, from Spain to Costa Rica, but not on small, isolated islands. Over the next few decades, fossil discoveries piled up, revealing a surprising pattern that caught the attention of paleontologists. Even the largest remains came from adults who stood at no more than 2 meters at the shoulder. Compared to mammoths on the mainland, who were twice as tall, these animals were minuscule. This difference was significant enough that in 1928, scientists declared it to be a new species, Mammuthus exilis. It normally goes by its common name however, the Channel Island Pygmy Mammoth. Although all of these discoveries were rather incomplete. To really understand this animal's origin, a much more complete skeleton would need to be found. And that's exactly what happened in 1994, when a 90% intact specimen of a 50 year old male was found. Not only did it prove the species much smaller size, but it also revealed that apart from that, it was identical to the Colombian mammoth. And because the pygmy mammoths weren't found anywhere else in the world, it means that they evolved on the islands. This raised an even bigger question, how did giant Colombian mammoths make it to the Channel Islands? The oldest pygmy mammoth fossil found so far shows that by 80,000 years ago they had already become a distinct species, although to evolve they would have had to arrive much earlier. But still, the question remains, how could they have travelled across 40 kilometers of open ocean? Well, to answer that, we need to take a look at what Southern California was like during the Ice Age. As with everywhere in the Ice Age, this region was both cooler and drier than it is today. On the mainland, the ecosystems were dominated by conifers and grasses, which supported a number of large herbivores. Coastal California also had its fair share of herbivores too. The most fearsome of which, dire wolves and the infamous saber-toothed cats were actually quite common back then and are known to have preyed upon mammoths. However, as we all know, the Pleistocene wasn't a very stable epoch. It was marked by continuous cycles of warming and cooling, which repeated countless times. In the colder times, sea levels dropped, connecting the mainland to what were previously islands and allowing the animals to disperse there. The warmer times, on the other hand, cut off the island populations, leading to speciation. However, even during the coldest of times, sea levels didn't drop low enough to connect any of the Channel Islands to the mainland. But the lower sea levels did greatly change the island's ecosystem. During glacial periods, the four northern islands would combine into a single landmass called Santa Rosé. At its maximum extent, it was over three times larger than the area covered by the islands today, and just seven kilometers from California's coast. So how did the mammoths cross over the water to the island? Well, scientists think that the mammoths actually swam. Surprisingly, despite their size, elephants are great swimmers. After all, they have a huge snorkel which allows them to breathe underwater. Scientists have even observed modern elephants swimming huge distances in some cases up to 48 kilometers. So with the distance sitting at just 7 kilometers, it is within reason to assume that they could have just swam over when sea levels were low. And whilst the oldest fossil found dates to 80,000 years ago, most experts believe they arrived between 150 and 250,000 years ago. Now that we know they could have swam over, what actually motivated them to do so in the first place? Because crossing over 7 kilometers of ocean comes with significant risks of drowning. Ancient pollen shows us that Santa Rosé had even more food than the mainland. The smell of abundant sedges and grasses would have travelled across the sea to the mainland. Elephants today have an incredibly strong sense of smell, and there is no doubt that mammoths did too. The first group to reach the island found themselves a paradise. Not only was there lots of food, but there were no large predators. The geographic barrier was significant enough to stop them. However, even without predators, life on their new home wasn't easy. Fluctuating sea levels continuously altered their habitat, often destroying their best grazing lands and separating them into various subpopulations. It is these fluctuations in sea level that caused the mammoths to shrink rapidly. Because when the population grew and the available habitat shrunk, there wasn't enough food to go around. 
In such times, smaller individuals had the advantage, with the larger ones dying out. With food no longer being in excess, mammoths didn't just turn to less, but different types. Aided by their smaller size, they were able to access steeper and higher areas where sticks and leaves were more abundant. Interestingly however, they were not the only mammoths on the island, because Colombian mammoths and pygmy mammoths seem to have coexisted on Santa Rosé for quite some time, with the most recent Colombian mammoth fossils from the island dating to 15,000 years ago. The remains of Colombian mammoths on the remnants of Santa Rosé are much rarer however. The ratio of fossils has led researchers to suggest that pygmies outnumbered them 3 to 1. So how exactly did they coexist? And why did only some mammoths shrink? Well, one idea is that during periods of high sea level, one subpopulation found itself an abundance of food and therefore didn't need to shrink. However, this is considered very unlikely. Instead, the most likely reason is that there were actually multiple waves of migration from the mainland. When the new Colombian mammoths arrived, they found the pygmy mammoths to be so different that they didn't breed. It's possible that each filled a different niche, opting for different food sources, allowing them to coexist. Mammoths haven't just shrunk once however. Across the ocean, one region has a very similar environment to California, the Mediterranean. On the island of Sardinia, another species of pygmy mammoth appears in the fossil record 450,000 years ago. During times of low sea level, Sardinia would have connected to Corsica, which would have come into close proximity to the mainland. Unlike the pygmy mammoths of Santa Rosé however, Sardinian pygmies descend from the steppe mammoth. Eventually, they shrunk from this giant becoming just 1.4 meters tall. Still, they weren't the smallest of the pygmy mammoths. Not too far away on the island of Crete, the Cretan dwarf mammoth shrunk to just 1 meter tall. As well as perhaps inspiring the cyclops, it also represents one of the most extreme examples of island dwarfism reducing its weight by almost 99%. However, the origin of this species isn't clear as it appeared much earlier. As you probably know, this is an example of Foster's rule, where large animals become smaller on islands and small animals become bigger. So why does this phenomenon repeat itself on almost every single island in the world? Well, there are many reasons. For one, the lower availability of food means that smaller individuals are more likely to survive the ever-changing conditions. Secondly, due to a lack of predators, large size is no longer needed for protection. In the case of island gigantism, however, small animals use their size to escape from predators, and so on islands they grow larger. Additionally, islands often lack large herbivores, and without the competition, small animals can become bigger. However, the isolation of islands means that when a new species arrives, it often wreaks havoc upon the native ecosystems. The Channel Islands pygmy mammoths disappear from the fossil record right around 11,600 years ago. Now, although this did coincide with the end of the Younger Dryas, warm spikes had occurred before with little effect on the mammoths. Instead, the culprit was the arrival of a new predator to the islands, humans. Roughly 13,000 years ago, people had migrated from the mainland to the islands by boat. While the islands don't show any evidence of direct hunting, we know that their ancestors had hunted Colombian mammoths all across North America. The mammoths would have been by far the easiest animals to hunt, and without a way to swim back to the mainland, they became extinct.